To make the gel, I'm pouring molten agarose into the gel cassette. The solution is 1% agarose made with TAE buffer and contains ethidium bromide so we can later visualize the DNA. One gel requires about 50 milliliters of solution, and after pouring, we let the gel solidify. Once you've added about 50 microliters, you can add the two gel uh, combs to add the slots for your gel. Depending on what you're doing, you may be using one or two gel combs. In this case, we are doing two gel combs or a double decker. After this, you let your gel harden, and then you can go get your samples during this time. So when the gel is done, or appears to be done, um, to check this, you can tap the sides, and then tilt a little bit, make sure it doesn't move, tilt carefully. You can slide out the combs carefully, place them to the side, and then pick up the gel, and turn it. So you want the side with the holes by the black node because DNA is negative so it will run to the positive node. So you want to run to red. Run to red. Once the gel is set, you add your running buffer which is 1xTAE which will be sitting by the gels. And you can add this to one side on top to both sides. Uh, and you just add it till it reaches the fill line marked on the side of the box. Once it is at the fill line, then you can prepare your samples for adding. Also note that there are some bubbles there. These bubbles are below this container here, which is good. If there are bubbles in the gel, that could cause some problems with the gel moving around, and we would not want that. When you're ready to prepare your sample, you'll need a small pipette size pipetter, a box of small pipettes, the 6X loading dye and DNA ladder from the freezer. Be careful not to confuse them as they're both green and you may need to thaw them a bit first, a strip, of pipe, a strip of parafilm, and your samples. What you want to do for this process is to set the pipetter to three microliters and get about three microliters of the loading dye. From here, you will make small dots of the loading die on your strip of power film. You can keep the pipetter set to 3 microliters and usually get 3 or 4 small dots out of, out of about 3 microliters. Also be careful to space these out as you do not want to risk mixing them as you go along. You'll want to get a new pipette and start with your DNA ladder. What you want to do is take three microliters of the DNA ladder and mix it with your loading die. You can mix by pipetting up and down a few times. And then once it is mixed with the gel, Put the gel down in a different spot, or the dot down in a different spot, um, so you know that that die has been used and you do not use it with another sample. You'll want to take your loading die and carefully put it into the first slot in the gel. You can take it, put it down in the slot carefully, and eject it. Be careful not to puncture the gel, as this will cause problems with your running and you will not get accurate results. But be careful also to make sure that you are in the slot when you eject it, or else the uh, dye will just go everywhere and you will not get accurate results either. Taking a new pipette tip, we start with our first sample. Keep it, again, keeping it on 3 microliters. We do not want to put the dye directly into the sample, as if we want to use the DNA downstream, this will contaminate it, and we will not be able to use it anymore. You follow the same process of mixing the dye with the DNA, and once the dye has been carefully mixed, you can put it in the gel. You want to place your first DNA sample in the second slot. If you are working with samples that are not numbered or you want to remember the order of, you will want to make sure to write down the order that you put your samples in. 
Our samples are numbered 1 through 6, which makes it easier, so that we know the first slot is DNA ladder, then the following 6 slots. Repeat this process with the rest of your samples, making sure not to reuse dye dots, and making more aliquots of dye if you need more than what you made in your first round. Once you have placed your last sample in the gel, you want to slide the cover of the gel lid on so that the red and black nodes slide into their spots and are fully connected. From there, you want to turn on the gel electrophoresis machine and set the electricity to whatever um, setting you need for the time that you want it to run. Uh, this is set to a little over 100. That is good for having it done in 10-15 minutes, sometimes a little less. You want to make sure to watch your gel dots as you will see the colors spread while the gel is running. So check it every few minutes, make sure that the gel does not run off the end, or if you have two layers, that the gel does not run into the next layer. During this time, you can clean up your workstation, including putting anything that has been in contact with the ethidium bromide liquid, like the gel over there, um, into a trash receptacle that you know is meant for items that have come in contact with ethidium bromide. You also will want to put your DNA ladder and loading dye back in the freezer, as well as your samples. Your samples will last longer in a freezer box, and if you want to use them for further downstream applications, you when the gel has run, or that is when the colored lines from the dye have moved about halfway across the area that they can go through, or a little bit further, you can take off the cap, shut off the electric box, and remove the gel from the running buffer. Let the running buffer drain off the sides, and then check to ensure that the dye has moved along. You can see that there is some dye here and some dye above it. Um, that shows that it has moved and that the dye ran hopefully successfully. We now move over to the UVP fluorescence box to image the gel. First, you turn on the switch at the top of the box and then open the box ensuring that this switch is off and this is on either safety switch or always off. You can then place the gel inside of the box, placing it somewhere near the center and rather even for imaging purposes. You can then shut the box, making sure to close the switch all the way, and flip the switch to on. It is acceptable to leave this on safety switch, and you want to make sure that this setting is on ethidium bromide, as that is what we are using to image the gel. You can then check your gel by looking inside the viewing frame here. So use the computer next to the imaging box to sign in. Uh, but it may already be logged on for the class, or you can use your own username and login credentials. Once you're logged in, go to the Start menu and open LabWorks. You can close out this first window, and then go to Acquire Video Digital. From here, you can start a preview, and then go to Edit Display Range. From here, you can slide this green bar, green and blue bar, on the left, and stop preview, and then slide this bar until you are happy with your image or find the setting where you can best see the DNA. From here you can hit capture, again play with the setting. until you are happy with how your DNA looks. This appears to be the best range for us, as we can see the DNA in a bit of the ladder. Oftentimes you will get clearer imaging of this, especially if you use more ladder, uh, but this will work for our, for our example today. From here, you want to go to Image Enhancement, and hit Invert. We invert before printing to save ink. From here, we can file, print, and today we are printing two copies, one for each of us. You will, while this is printing, you will also want to save the image. If you just go up to file, save, and then name it something like gel and then the date. 
You can also add what is in the gel um, if you know what is, if you have a specific thing that you're doing the gel for. From here we have our two printed images. We can slice it off and then cut them. Um, after you're done printing, you'll want to put a glove back on. And then power off the, off the box and power off the camera. From here, you can open the box, take out your gel, and dispose of it in the appropriate ophidium bromide trash can. This may also be easier with two gloves. Then you can just push your gel right into the trash bin once you show you have your imaging. Then also put your gloves in the trash bin after you return the box um, to hold the gel back to where you had it. When you're returning your gel, if you are done running gels for the day, you can also take the 1XT running buffer and dump it in the sink.